Hi, this is a follow-up to my last video about Archipelago, where I talked about how to set up the whole thing. And in this video, I'm talking about something that links directly to Archipelago called Pop Tracker. This is a program that connects with Archipelago directly, the server, and tells you, the player, for all your games, where your remaining checks are that you can get at this very moment in real time. So I can be playing, and I know that my map has displayed that right here on the map of where I am in this game, there's an item. And if I get it, I got an AP item, and it directly, like, marks it off as I've already done it. It's now gray. There's no other items at that specific location. And if I go into the shop, I can see a whole bunch of items. And if I highlight over the box, I can see that each and every item in the shop is also a check. And I'm incentivized to buy them all. And you'll see in real time that they get marked off on the map. And this also, in turn, would update your item tracker, which should be on the left here for most games. And I can know that I have Yoshi. The game tells me I have Yoshi. I have the hammer, I have the boots. And if I were to pick up, say, a bunch of other items, like if I picked up, uh, like, a different party member, it would automatically glow that party member up. Tells me that I have it. This works for every game on Archipelago. Every game has this, or in some form. And Pop Tracker is just the program that sets it all up. And today, I'm going to show you how to set this all up. And then every time you play any game on Archipelago, you can easily learn everything you need to know about how not to get stuck. And... So you won't get lost, basically. Alright, so we start here. This is the Pop Tracker GitHub page. Down in the description, it, is, it'll be, it will be linked. And you want to go for the Windows version down here. This is the 032.1 win64.zip. Go ahead and click it. Very small download. And go ahead and open it up. So I just click it here to open up my WinRAR. You can extract it, do whatever you need to just gain access to this Pop Tracker folder somehow. Once Pop Tracker is extracted somewhere, go ahead and open it. And we've got a lot of stuff in here, but only two things matter the poptracker.exe and the PAX folder. The PAX folder is where you actually place your downloads that you get from each community's Discord that houses the Pop Tracker pack for the game you're trying to play. What does that look like exactly? Well, let me demonstrate that. Here is uh, the Archipelago Index from the last video. I'm going to do Majora's Mask. So I'm going to set up the Majora's Mask tracker. I'm going to go down to Legend of Zelda. Um, uh, there it is. Legends of the Majora's Mask. And go to the pin messages. So like you go for the pin messages for getting the AP world, the tracker should also be in here. It might be in the same uh, link as the AP world itself. But somewhere there'll be someone who's doing, hey, this is my tracker. Latest pop tracker release. Go ahead and click it. Okay, I'm here. So this is the download link. It's called the source code zip file. This will be different depending on your game, but in Majora's Mask case, it is just this file. I'm going to click it. And boom, it starts downloading. And I have it here on my other monitor. This is the file right here, Majora's Mask Pop Tracker. Now I'm just going to drop this into the PAX folder. So this is PAX. Just drop it in. You can extract it if you want. It doesn't really matter. Open up poptracker.exe. And now I can open the Majora's Mask AP. Um, so when you uh, select it, there usually is going to be multiple options like items only, maps only, or maps and items in this case. But some games will have different types of options you can pick from. If you know the game you're playing, you probably know what they, what they all mean. But generally, maps and items are the biggest kind of collection is what you want to look at. Because this gives you all the information you need. Great for beginners, right? So, we're here. This is the Majora's Mask map. It works pretty much the same as the uh, Paper Mario one. I can see all the checks I would have available to me by default in the game. However, this is not yet connected to the Archipelago multi-world yet, because I need to give it a port name and stuff. So, I'm going to leave this off to the side and make it a bit smaller here. And then, I'm going to go ahead and head back into the multi-world. So, this is the multi-world that I've set up for this. So, this is a bunch of games that I uh, would be playing. And we've got this AP button right here. So, it's turning this to disabled. You just click it. And now... Enter Archipelago host and port, so it should already be archipelago.gg, uh, colon. But if it's not, make sure it's that. 57474 is my port. And then I need to enter my slot. So, make sure you set the slot for the game that's actually playing the game your tracker is for. So, in this case, it's my Majora's Mask game. And it connects that easy. It's that simple. And now, all my starting items I set in my settings are checked on, so... I have sticks and nuts to start with, 
I start with all the maps. I start with Song of Time, Song of Soaring. So it knows all this. So it updates what I can do accordingly to that uh, information. So, for example, if I were to mark the bow, look how much more of the map just got enabled just from me clicking the bow. And this will happen automatically. So you'll find the bow from someone else getting it or you in your own game. And it'll automatically update and show, hey, you can do this one now. You can do this from shooting gallery, right? It's going to say update in live time what you can do. So you never like truly should be able, you never should go, wait, what do I do now? I don't know what to do because you've always got your auto tracker that updates in live time. It's super nice. It's such a really nice thing to learn a randomizer. There's no better way to learn a randomizer for any game than pop tracker on Archipelago. I know from experience playing like before Archipelago, having to manually input every check I do, that was complete garbage. But this is great. And pretty much every game you can think of, every game that I looked at at least, had a pop tracker. Obviously, not all of them are going to be created equally. For example, this one doesn't have a very detailed overworld map. It's good enough, but compared to like the dungeons where it's like really specific and abstract detail, like you can really see each room and exactly where things are. The overworld is not as up to snuff, but this can be improved in the future, right? You know, compared to the Thousand Year Draw one that I showed earlier at the beginning of the video, that's like next level. But for now, this is, you're going to be, this is good enough, right? And a lot of games are going to be like this. So some games don't need as much information to have on a tracker than others. Like you, you don't need as much info for some games that don't have Zelda-like progression, right? I say this because like, you know, you got games like Stardew Valley or even like um, a roguelike game. You don't really need a tracker for a roguelike, right? Because it's just, you play the game, you pick up the items and you go. You're not really going to get lost in those kinds of games. Usually they have their own kind of system for what uh, could count as getting checks in those games. But for games like Zelda, you know, Metroidvanias, this is invaluable for learning. So that's basically it for this tutorial. I don't really have anything else to say, really. Um, I will, however, go over some troubleshooting. What do I mean by that? Well, by troubleshooting, I basically just mean some download links are kind of confusing. So I already mentioned everyone makes their own downloads. You know, no, no, no same person makes everything. This also means that the way they distribute the downloads are also going to be different per game. So if you're unfamiliar with GitHub, then let me show you how to even download some of the weird ones. So first of all, um, the easiest way is you click a download and then it's just right here. Paper Mario Tracker .zip. So I would just click this and I would get it. Boom, it's that easy. But in the, the earlier for the Majora's Mask one, it wasn't named like Majora's Mask Tracker. It's just this source code zip file. It still works. It's just not immediately obvious which one you might have to click on this page. I mean, I guess it could be obvious enough, but what I'm saying is that not every game is going to name it as such. And that further goes into this example, which doesn't even have any download link anywhere, it looks like, right? This is the pop tracker software, nothing there, no releases. But the download is actually right here. It's this code button. You click the code and you click download zip. This is the same as what I just did with Majora's Mask and the original Paper Mario. But you just have to click the code and download zip button. Some games are like this, right? Um, here is Wind Waker. Takes you to a whole special page with a bunch of information. And the download button is just this. You click this and boom, it downloads. So a lot of games are different. And even we have Yoshi's Island here. It takes you to this page, which looks familiar. But you have to click this releases button. Take you here. So you can download tracker they all go in the same place they all work the same it's just the way you download them might be different so you might have to do some looking around those are just some basic examples of uh download link locations on github and with that i'm done um i hope this video was uh as helpful as the last one and i mean i think this program is really cool <laughs> i love it so anyway yeah thanks for watching